Without any further ado, I would like to introduce our first speaker, the man at the moment, um, John Sutton. John has um, a fascinating background in academic arts. Uh, his radical politics began in the late 60s and early 70s in Perth uh, in opposition to conscription in the Vietnam War. Uh, in the early 70s, John was part of this group of politically radical students at UWA. He was active in anti apartheid um, campaigns uh, against racial assault tours of Australia by South African sporting teams, and he was also involved in the anti nuclear movement. With his move to Newcastle in the 1980s, John was involved in uh, nuclear issues and, and in progressive social change, but he also became more interested in local issues. And, one of those issues here was um, the campaign to rehabilitate Crosby Creek. He played a key role in forming the Newcastle Greens in 1990, was elected an to Newcastle Council in 1991, um, and served two terms as a Greens councillor between 1991 and 1999. He worked professionally as a journalist uh, and a uh, communication academic, and continues to be involved in a range of social, environmental, and economic issues. His latest local campaign involvement and subject for, for today, uh, there could be no better way of breaking the conference, the symposium, and, and kicking off, is as John describes it, the truly bizarre but fascinating Lane Street Beats issue. So welcome. <laughs> the council last night voted to uh, not accept the Premier's offer uh, to provide an arborist to do an independent expert assessment of the trees. Uh, and so the decision to remove the tree still stands. Uh, the general manager now will begin to enact that uh, decision and uh, essentially it could begin any time from Monday. So uh, I'm not feeling particularly good about uh, where the campaign is at right now. Um, just because of the way things happen, when I signed up to do this, I must say, I thought it would all be tucked away. Uh, I think uh, those, <laughs> those of you who are laughing about that will obviously know that some of the the ins and outs of the issue. When I signed up for the campaign, I would have thought that it would be over uh, 18 months ago. Um, it wasn't a campaign that looked like it would run for a long time, uh, but it, it has been uh, incredibly bizarre. Now, because of the limitations of time, I'm not going to run through a chronology of this issue. I'm making a radical assumption. Think about that in for a moment. Uh, you might deal with that for a while. I'm making a radical assumption that people here. Um, know Lane Street, know a little bit about the Higgs issue, even if you notice that it exists, so I don't have to actually say, um, start from those sort of basics. Is that true? Is there anyone here who is thinking, what? What's Lane Street? What are the Higgs? <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> 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 to at least touch on that basics. Um, so this is this morning's uh, Newcastle Herald, um, and uh, you can see that it's an issue of the moment. It's a common issue, it's often on the front page, and the media often in the, the lead item in the television bulletins. Uh, in fact, the media people talk about thick fatigue. Um, you know, they, they get comments on their blogs uh, by people saying, oh, yeah, no, a big story, etc. Thick fatigue is a real issue. So, and that's a campaign issue as well. Um, everyone wants this issue solved. Uh, we obviously want it solved with the, the, the trees remain, or at least having undergone a, a, a fair risk assessment. Uh, those who are opposed to us want it solved by just getting rid of the trees. So that's the fundamental disagreement. But I think everyone wants it, wants the issue resolved in some way. Uh, so this is a hero, of course, and the media obviously plays a key role in the, the way these things play out. Okay. So, so this is Peter Lewis, who has made, I think, a great contribution to the campaign. I mean, his, uh, this is from his Facebook uh, page, where he's got a whole gallery of the uh, Lane Street cartoons that he set up. And, uh, and he's a great cartoonist, Peter Lewis. And, I think he is one of the people who saw through the, the bullshit uh, from the other side of this, this issue very quickly, and I think that uh, it tells a great narrative. Uh, in many ways, when I was compiling this, and I have to say it was 2.30 last night, 3 o'clock last night, that I was still doing this, and I thought, really, all I'd need to do here to give people a story of is just flash through either some of the photographic records that are on the web, uh, Peter Lewis's cartoons, they all give the narrative. So it's a wonderful narrative that Peter Lewis has provided there. Anyway, that's the finger on those. This thing doesn't seem to want to. Um, okay, the Herald hasn't been always fantastic. Uh, this is this morning. So this is a story from last night's coverage of it. Um, and uh, you know, I know 
would have convinced me, I didn't say this quite recently, yes. Um, but um, there are times when I think he's, um, he's I, I, I've been a journalist, and so forgive me if I comment on the hope and actual quality of journalism. Um, the, there is a difference, and I belong to a sort of traditional school, I guess, there is a difference between journalists who write commentary and opinion, and that's a legitimate thing to do, as long as it's random and such, and journalists who are reporting on something. And one of the, the generally accepted conventions used to be that you, you kind of leave out those things when you're reporting. You, you try to give objective facts, and, you know, objectivity is possible, you know, that discussion, but nonetheless, that's what he's tried to do. And you know, it worries me a little bit when we get this kind of reporting um, from last night. This thing is very likely to go forward. Ah, there we go. An ugly confrontation. I mean, I don't know what's wrong with just a confrontation. There was a confrontation. I don't know why things are uh, ugly in that sense. Um, protesters who reacted angrily. Um, you know, the, again, the depiction of a, a value judgment in there. I mean, I think that, that may well be fair enough. There was anger there, and so that might not be going too far out of the line. But this one here, the, uh, uh, the notion that Angle led to the vote aggressively attempted to block the group of, uh, uh, of councillors. So, I mean, it's interesting, isn't it, that further on in the story, the guy that describes what the councillors did, he doesn't say that they pig-headedly voted to retain. He doesn't use those kind of adjectives to characterise what the councillors did, but these kind of adjectives Value-made methods are being used. Okay, so given that we're investigating the nature of radicalism, uh, I wanted to talk about you know, how how the Whigs campaign, how is it radical? Is it radical? Although a number of people might question that. Um, and how is it radical in terms of Newcastle? Um, so what makes it radical? What makes it radical in terms of Newcastle? Now, my background is history in English, um, and so forgive me, I'm a little bit fascinated with the history of words. Uh, and so I'm, I'm always interested in the etymologies of, of words. I think they tell you a lot about it. And it's fascinating, I don't know if you realise this, but the word um, radical comes from the Latin word, radicalis, having roots. It's about roots. Um, Radix for now um, is the Latin word for root. And you can see actually things play on this. I mean, this is just a post that I found somewhere on the net. Radical roots farm. And they're obviously conscious of that kind of etymology. Even this one, you know, the word square root um, in, in mathematics actually comes from that kind of background. And so somebody here, I think, is quite consciously understood that that's a connection. Uh, that, that word radical, you know, it's, it has meanings in biology and chemistry and mathematics, radical, free radicals, etc. Uh, radical numbers, they all relate back to this kind of Latin origin in various ways. Um, you can see the comments that are made. I mean, I actually, I, I, you know, I think it's common on one level because I don't like what it says about him <laughs> radical. But it's a bit smart in the sense that he's saying, I assume that uh, Frank Roosevelt would be conscious of this. A radical is a man who both been plant firmly planted. Now, you know, roots planted, I don't, I don't think that's a mistake. I don't think he's actually deliberately playing on that kind of thing. Firmly planted in the air. <laughs> so, not a nice comment really about radical and radicals to some extent, but uh, uh, it captures that kind of notion of the belonging to roots. So often came to, arising from or going to a root or source. That's the, the, one of the definitions, and one of the early definitions of, of what a, of a radical or a radical. So in that sense, it means sort of fundamental, um, something that's fundamental, something that is basic, has that kind of connotation, gets to the roots of something. And so, you know, a radical solution in that sense is a solution that gets right to its thorough elements, gets right to the root of uh, and I mean, and this is kind of what like, struck me as kind of curiously odd that here I am talking about trees <laughs> and uh, radical politics and the whole issue about these trees is their bloody roots. <laughs> uh, so, uh, so you know, there's a, a, a politish kind of connection with it all. Um, the, I don't, I'm not going to go into this at great length, but you know, really the argument about the risk of these trees is that they have an unstable root base. So it's about about roots on that level. <coughs> Exposure, to it. but if you read what we call fig porn, which is the, uh, the council's tasteful uh, history of figs, uh, the, uh, they show you pictures like this. This is a uh, tree in Bruce Street that fell over during the uh, Ashen Volca storm, uh, and so they are uh, talking all about all about roots. There. <laughs> and there's another thing from the uh, 
from the uh, of classical history about uh, Tyrrell Street, we are moving to both sides of the street up to almost the crest of the hill, um, and uh, talking about the roots and how they supposedly limited in their growth because of the existence of the, the curve. Anyway, I mean, I just they, they by way of kind of quirkish connection. They're not, not Tyrrell Street, they're in Tyrrell Street, aren't they? Yeah, Tyrrell Street. Yeah, it's not. not yeah, I mean, you do need to be careful because the council loves to put pictures up and just leave it in the air that they think that allowing people to think that they actually blame the street. No tree has ever blown over and blamed the street. No tree, despite some claims to the contrary, has ever been what they call wind thrown. In other words, a root plate lifted out of the ground, which is a definition of wind thrown. That's not happened to any tree ever in Lane Street. And when you're told so, you can, tell, you can take it from me, that's not true. Um, but another main thing to grab, well, slightly, uh, you can see where this, uh, this evolved, these kind of things from that fundamental thing of the roots. They were affecting fundamental or revolutionary changes in current practices, conditions, or institutions. So you can see now where it's kind of getting its political flavor from. And so a radical political philosophy has that kind of meaning now. Um, the, uh, you can see that uh, in, in, I think this is a quote by Mark Twain. This one well known quote by Mark Twain about radicals. A radical of one century is a conservative, the next radical of the next year is when he's warm now, and conservative adopts him now. It's an interesting quote in itself, but it's kind of, I guess, that, that kind of usage that's implicit in that, so that definition, I think, is what Twain is talking about there. Yeah. Uh, here's another one, another definition. Depart, departing markedly from the usual or customary. Um, so, to some extent, it means extreme. Extreme radical opinions, that they're on the extreme. And uh, you can see that where the history of these things have come from, but to some extent it's almost a contradiction that starts. I mean, roots are fundamental to uh, uh, the, the heart of something, if you like, and here it is now radical becoming something without an extreme uh, radical view, exactly. Radical Christianity or Islam, and those sort of usages there. Um, there. Now, there's a same thing as well, and I heard on 1233 on the way here that uh, Jill Emerson was talking. James and she was asking readers to, uh, sorry, listeners to phone in and say, well, what do you think radical means? And uh, somebody phoned in and said, well, I'm a server, you know, radical means rad to me. But it's excellent. You know, that's, rad. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a radical, uh, uh, a radical skateboard maneuver or something like that. So it's got that sort of extreme, wonderful kind of thing, rad, that, rad, that's really radical, radical haircut, you know, that, that sort of usage. And so you can see how it's gone through a bit of an evolution, but it has still retains these kind of different meanings. Uh, so interesting, what, what does it mean when we use it uh, in these various kind of contexts that uh, you need to think about? Um, earlier on, as I said, you know, I'm going to make a radical assumption. I guess, you know, I'm meaning in the sense the extreme part of it there, I'm making extreme assumption, ironically, but um, they're the kind of frames in which it can, can mean. And it was interesting when, um, in terms of mainstream radicalism, um, I mean, obviously, it is to do with roots on that quirkish basis, but it's to do with roots in, in another sense, too, that I'll talk about. I, I, I happen to think the campaign has been excellent and wonderful, and the people in that campaign group are excellent and wonderful. Um, it's been a rad campaign in that way. Um, is it fundamental? I mean, you, the, the, the Lane Street campaign is not going out with a program for changing the world. Uh, it's about 14 victories at its basic level, but it certainly has become about something more than that. Now, it's become about things like, you know, whose trees are these anyway? Whose, whose space, whose city is this? Um, there's an issue of civic engagement, uh, civic democracy that's involved in it. And, and very much an issue of local democracy. You see that flowing through the material. I'll try and get on the show in some of that. Um, can somebody watch my time too? I, you know, I have a time list, to be honest. As I said, it was three o'clock. I was putting this together. Uh, this is very cool. Uh, I guess it's... Sorry. Yeah, that doesn't mean anything to me. Just coming in my time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I think there's this issue too of grassroots, and we're going to see that word roots coming back as well. Um, grassroots and radicalism, and, and putting those two words together. I'm a Green. One of the four founding principles of the Greens is grassroots democracy. Um, and uh, I think grassroots radicalism really is about community, it's about local and, and community as those kinds of things. Um, now, is it extreme? We've certainly been um, accused of that. That's certainly a discourse that are used by, that's used by our opponents. 
Um, and in fact, when we had a discussion, I had a discussion with Nancy about what to title this, this presentation, and uh, she suggested that we call this. And uh, I must say, at the time, we were being subjected to exactly these kind of criticisms. Oh, they're just a radical bunch of rat bags, you know, with that sense of extreme, out there, not mainstream, fringe, etc. Uh, and so I, I said, no, I actually want to take the word radical out. I don't want to give them a target for this. Now, you know, I'm someone who loves appropriating words and defending words, but, you know, I was edgy enough to go, no, well, let's leave it out for this purpose. I've worked very happy as history settles. I do see, in my own sense, I do see the Lane Street Victories campaign as being belonging in a radical discourse and framework, but uh, I'll let that history settle on that and call it that, but at the moment it could actually be a problem for that's kind of interesting issue discussing it itself. Okay, well, let's, let's like sort of take on the radical issue of it. And how how are you passing that? Again, I'm not going to really talk too much about this because I did have a lot of time to put together, but there is, and we'll hear it today, there's a, a long tradition of radical politics in Newcastle. Um, radical politics is usually associated, of course, with left wing politics, although you, know, you get that term radical right, especially in, the, in America, so that sort of notion of it being on extremes of the political spectrum is there in that. And probably the notion of thoroughgoing change as well. Um, but um, in, in, in more, more specifically in Newcastle, there is a tradition of environmental radicalism. Uh, and whilst I think there's been an efflorescence of that since the, the 80s, perhaps, it, it goes back much earlier than that. I wish I could have found a photograph that I have of, um, of uh, families and people in their, old, their suits and, and hats sitting under trees in Maitland Road in Islington Park, uh, defending those big trees there uh, back when I think it's from the 30s, so it's, it's quite some time back, it might have been the 40s, um, but it's certainly quite some time back, and that was a protest action uh, designed to defend the, uh, the, 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 those trees from being removed. Uh, and then there's a, what they call the Battle of Burnley, which of course took place in uh, 1973, and there are people sitting in this room who were part of it, I noticed that with the, uh, over there. That was very much part of that. Now, I'm going to give, give you a quick kind of rundown on the sorts of things that we did because it's hard to give too much of a historical perspective on this one because it's just happening now and it's just it's current affairs rather than history at the moment. Uh, you know, it's, it's a standard campaign in one sense, although it's a campaign that's got everything. If, if I were teaching campaigning, I would use this campaign as a model to go, okay, here's the stuff that a grassroots community campaign does because it really has done everything. Uh, it's done the lobbying and advocacy work, all the direct meetings and telephones with decision makers, etc. It's done all that kind of stuff. It, there's been letter and email campaigns that we have instigated from our supporters that have been quite successful in many ways, certainly successful in terms of responses and volume, uh, and with some successes in terms of, of getting those decision makers uh, across the line in some areas. Um, we've taken legal action on actually press that button, I'll go through that later on. Um, but we've, we've, we've engaged in legal action, and the legal action has been critical at various times in the campaign. It's actually a court case pending now, which we're going to have to go and talk about after this, <laughs> what to do. But it's the second court case, uh, the Parks and Playgrounds bill that took out another uh, court case earlier on in the campaign that Doug was involved in. And both have been critical in terms of buying time, because the treatment would really gone by now if those legal actions haven't happened. There's been direct action and, and protests about all those. I'm going to show you some pictures about these if I get a moment. Um, there's been rallies, there's been picket lines, there's been sit-ins, there's been um, there's been a vigil that was that took place in front of the library, the, the Newcastle Library, for many, many months. There was a ten year city on Civic Park, where there's a traditional location. I don't really know that, but in, in Civic Park, there is a traditional location for ten year There was one there when the Iraq War broke out in the, the 90s, and it was part of the tradition. Um, already, it wasn't the first time that something like that had been done then. So we would set up a team to see there. There was a camp, we, we, we occupied Civic Park um, and uh, camped there overnight. There's a, there's a petition, one of the biggest petitions ever collected in Newcastle, 11,500 uh, signatures um, on a petition to save the trees. Um, there's been lots of merchandise, we've got a wonderful merchandise, Sharon, <laughs> who uh, is a fantastic merchandise, and she produces t shirts like, like this one. <laughs> So, yeah, there have been wonderful people who've done some creative design on this. I love it. I saw one guy who'd done his own shirt um, on the picket line and he turned the, because one of our favourite songs uh, in the rally is All We're Saying is Give the Trees a Chance, uh, turn around the Don Lennon song a little bit. Uh, and he, what he did, he realised that, he wrote the, uh, he got his t shirt and he turned the peace sign around, which of course looks like a tree. Um, when you, when you turn it 
turned it upside down. And you guys were always saying it's giving trees a chance and it was a great little bit of creativity. There's mouse mats, there's CDs, there's one, you know, this CD here, Canopy, which is a recording of the, the bird songs on Lane Street. I can tell you as someone who got up many, many mornings uh, to be there at daybreak, it's actually a very uh, audio beautiful time to be there. Uh, we have Think Friends gatherings. It's a network of people that we call the Think Friends now who gather in various ways, and uh, that's a very important part of it, that sort of socialising and being together in that kind of way. Sits and nibblings, uh, loonies and rat bags picnics, sort of taking those accusations and appropriating them and, and using them in a fun way. Lots of fundraising events. We had a wonderful night at Results not so long ago, which had brought together a whole range of musicians that uh, wanted to contribute. It was like a, a Back to the Future uh, concert for Newcastle in many ways. Uh, the big fib gig uh, that we had in the, uh, in the Civic Park. That was uh, There's, of course, traditional media that we've used. We've had, you have to do the traditional media, so we've got spokespeople and they go out there and uh, they do that traditional media. But we've also used other things, we've used our own media, leaflets, pamphlets, those kind of things. Social media, I guess for me, this has been uh, the campaign in which I really learned the benefit of social media, so we're everywhere across the social media. We use email, and I could not believe how much email we actually use within the campaign, and that's both for internal campaign communication and getting the word out there to a broader public. SMS is amazing for the use of SMSs in this campaign. I think we probably we send out big alerts to people, and we probably send out around about nearly a thousand, I think, just thinking of the numbers on people's databases. We share around a bit, but a huge number. Um, there's a website which uh, we have, there's a Facebook site, there's Twitter, so, and, and YouTube. If you go to YouTube, in fact, one of the things I would have loved to have done here is to present a bit of a YouTube uh, video. But go there and have a look at themselves. There's so many YouTube videos that have been present, uh, produced both by both sides, I have to say. There's one by Rob Cook as well, who tells you what he calls the facts uh, about Lane Street. But there's others that uh, are giving the real facts and also documenting the, the campaign. Uh, the art has been amazing. Uh, one of the, the astounding things about the campaign is the artwork that people have had. The banners, the posters, the pavement art, even, uh, at the, uh, the picket line. The petition as well. Rallies, you would not believe it, Uncle Rallies. <laughs> At the independent assessment band has been a big part of it. That's a rally that took place early one morning when we thought that uh, they were going to move in to, uh, to get them, to get the trees down, but uh, something happened. I can't remember what it was. They got a rabbit coming out of the hat that morning, the one did. The uh, rallies at Civic Park, various meetings to explain things to supporters. Most of our rallies have been on the steps of Town Hall. It's become almost a kind of piece of the furniture <laughs> around the town. Now our rallies at Town Hall. Um, uh, it's giving you a sense of the, when you're on any of these, just to give you a sense of the, the feeling for it. Kids, kids, lots of kids have been part of the campaign. Lots of kids, lots of young people. It's been a real, one of the things that we're accused of is that there's some kind of green fringe. In fact, they're totally wrong about that. I mean, it's been one of the great pitfalls for them. They have not realised how wrong they are about that. This is mainstream Newcastle uh, that they're backing. It's, it's the kids, it's the families, it's the grandparents. It's just ordinary people out there um, trying to defend what they value about their community. Um, so it's wonderful young people being involved. Wonderful women are on this dead long and I'm like, Debbie's been here. I thought you might be here today. I'm just an academic at the university. But uh, these two, uh, the Aunt Dan, and Debbie, uh, become the champ, our champ leaders at the rallies. That just kind of kind of emerged organically in the way these things do. And now they come with these wonderfully prepared chants that we sing along to um, that, are, that are good fun and keep the morale going. Uh, but Debbie's also uh, done a lot of the photography for the campaign and uh, been a wonderful documentary. A lot of these photographs are actually from Debbie's uh, Facebook site. John Tate, the board mayor, um, Fee, Fee Mosley, the coordinator, say about things, and Denise next to it. Um, I probably should stop naming individual people because there are going to be people I haven't deliberately made a check to make sure I've got everyone in this. So I hope if, if anyone here feels missed out, sorry about that. This is Linda Burney, who's the leader of the opposition in New South Wales, came up to, to talk about it and uh, uh, go around and pick a line. Here's the legal actions, so the legal barristers and senior, senior uh, council there who's done this for uh, nothing, Mark Robinson, who's working for Lona Court, down at the Land and Grime Court. Here was the notice for the vigil uh, that we ran in, um, outside the, uh, the library. Um, the people came and spoke to that vigil, so it became a bit of an event in its own right on, on Fridays. This is the camp vigil in the city 
park and uh, we again spontaneously organised just after a meeting and went over to the park. What are we going to do? People said, let's, let's camp here because we thought we were going to uh, move in the next day. So we camped overnight to, to occupy that space. Um, the Simpson Nibbling, so just a social event, good fun, um, visible to, the, to Derby Street, but a good fun event. I think the Tuffin McQueen came and visited this after one of the Radical Newcastle events. Um, it was great to see in there. The music's been, you know, musicians come and join in these things. Um, so this was just cut some uh, banjo players who came in and uh, serenaded. That's like that end of it. Um, this is Kate, who also has a, a, a persona that she, she married one of the trees. Um, it became the best of me. There was a wedding ceremony because Main Street is a traditional place for weddings, so she decided to kind of kick off on that sort of thing. But she's also a musician, wonderful singer. Um, more singing, more things. The, the, the art, we go back to the art now about how much uh, it started early. This is, uh, this is when the trees weren't even barricaded. People uh, started to put artworks on the trees themselves, uh, just spontaneous. During the picket line, the, the walls of the Instance of the picket line um, became a, a living community art space. Uh, it was wonderful. Just, just get great joy from going around and seeing every day the new things that were put up. Um, I love this one. It's one of my favourite ones. A couple of uh, young women who had a business in town came, came up and they cut out each one of these little leaves with a sticky bit underneath it. And you wrote up your feelings about it and put it on the tree. Uh, it's just become a collector's item, been added to. Um, see some of these other artworks. Uh, this was kids putting their handprints uh, on the... Uh, uh, um, again, just, I'm not going to dwell on these. The clever ones, nice, nice to work out. This is these uh, young people sort of sat there for half a day putting this artwork on this, uh, this cardboard, this cardboard, and that was one of the products of it. I think that's the edition. I mean, there's been professional artists in it too. This is a professional... It's a wood cover line. I don't know, but you know that there's a professional one there. Lots of posters and banners. This Bunch of people of their own accord decided that they knew Barry O'Farrell was going to be at the, uh, the International Rugby League match uh, in Newcastle. Uh, they decided they'd make this banner up and they'd get, try to get it on television. So they just held it up there and one of them they came up to the, this is a picket line, this photo was taken, they came up and they were really pumped because one of them had received a text message from a friend of hers in Queensland saying they'd be watching the match and they'd seen the banner on, TV, on television. So Barry O'Farrell got the message there and please provide the artist. Um, just some of the purposes of the music is in those places and bands. I'm not going to think wrong those, but a lot of that sort of stuff being put up. Um, protest action itself was a major thing. So, this is what we call Big Friday. You can see the, uh, the, the lines there, the police and the uh, protesters. It was quite a, an eventful day. I'm not going to run through the events of it, but just to give you a feel for it. You can see in that one um, the number of children. Um, my wonderful Susie, who ran that Darby Street in. People recognised Margaret Ollie's um, uh, support of the fix, the and there was a great uh, Nova Catherine, of course, and uh, uh, the art gallery was there, and so they made that sort of connection um, using those sort of Nova Catherine icons. Um, was it, as I said, it was quite a dramatic day with people um, being knocked down, and people being knocked down, people being very upset. It was a very uh, extremely uh, stressful day at the Big Friday. Police and media. Um, now, this is Norm Barnwell who, um, who was involved in that bird wood, the Battle of the Bird wood. So, you've got the continuity of an activist there. And um, he sat right in the middle of the lovely photo, he sat right in the middle of Lane Street on the, well, this was the second uh, on the ground protest. Uh, and uh, I, love, I love the photos of him doing that. He's over 80 years old. That's a classic photo, I think. I think it's one of my favourite photos from the campaign. Yes, this is um, being in the Bodinesian mold and jumping with the... Uh, that one's an interesting one, but to see how, how well the police prepare for these things. A Waratah mass arrest kit. <laughs> you come with the mass arrest kit. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and there were arrests. So here were the police moving in. There were people holding on to lampposts uh, right through. This is theme. And basically the story of their arrest in Dragon. And they had all the big themes. Now that's them going to court for people who are arrested. Yeah, that's their day in the one day. Uh, and then there was a picket line, the picket line just uh, lots of events. It's quite a friendly atmosphere. This is a, you know, one of the picket line people handing over copies to the security people. <laughs> <laughs> um, you can see that they are out in the news. <laughs> <laughs> Got a friend, a visit from the CFMU to the picket line. Here's the, the 
things that can stay off the back of the line a little bit, they'll just see the corner and so they have a random spot there. But I guess at the end of the door, I mean, there's all that's happened, but if you can see that the thread of local democracy is coming through there. And you know, this, this banner, I think, says it well. Transparency for citizens to become something they deserve a fair and honest assessment before 80 years of history is trash. I mean, it's stuff, I think it encapsulates the sort of political message in terms of a larger sort of concern about things like local democracy. Um, this is what I did, it's called the civic pool and, uh, and sort of trying to satirise some of the, uh, the language that are much made of prison out of it. Uh, this one's, I love this one, this is, you know, that, that truck there, part of the civic park, uh, the trees there, balcony bell, it's a council truck, and uh, you notice what it says on the side of it, 30,000 trees coming to you. <laughs> <laughs> um, just the events in civic park that have been social events, uh, I love this sort of um, uh, um, montage, whatever it is, of uh, faces that uh, Debbie Bond has done on her Facebook page. Uh, it shows the diversity of the people involved in the campaign. We don't have a part of it, obviously, but, but there it is. So you can see the kind of diversity involved. I'm not sure that you can do it, but you know, I'm not sure that it's a finish. Sorry about that. <laughs> It's not looking good at the moment, I have to say. It's poison at the time, and uh, we really don't know if we've got any more rabbits in the hat. We always seem to find something that, that's hard to know. I think we are facing a depressing prospect at the moment. Uh, anyway, look, that's it. I'd love to have a discussion about it. Uh, if, if, if we've got time, I assume we have it right at the moment. <laughs> There's an immediately behind schedule. Sorry about that. Um, but uh, anyway, I, I hope that uh, for what I was doing,